The Russian military intelligence unit that carried out the DNC hack, uh, that group is nicknamed Fancy Bear. And they're apparently still working now, this summer, s still against us, the American public, still on behalf of Donald Trump's interests. Right after we learned last month about the Trump Tower meeting between Donald Trump's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., uh, and his campaign chair, Paul Manafort, and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, along with all those various Russians who were promising Russian government dirt on Hillary Clinton, right after we learned about that Trump Tower meeting, you might remember that the Trump White House launched um, kind of a, a PR counteroffensive to try to blunt the impact of that news. And a little bit of it was defense. They tried to excuse the meeting, dismiss it as no big deal. Remember, they kind of argued that, oh, anybody would have taken that meeting. It's common political practice. Everybody always takes oppo research on their political enemies from Putin. <laughs> Who among us doesn't tap the Russian government whenever we need dirt on a fellow American? Right. The, 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 they did mount a little bit of a defense, but the Trump White House hates playing defense as much as anybody in politics. And so alongside that kind of sad defense, they also simultaneously launched a counter offensive in which they claimed actually that the real scandal, the real foreign collusion was done by Hillary Clinton. It was the Hillary Clinton campaign that colluded with a foreign power. I'm rubber, you're glue. White House officials, uh, the president's Russian legal team, multiple shows on the Fox News Channel, the, the, White House, the White House spokesperson speaking from the briefing room, they all started echoing this same counterclaim that the, there was no collusion scandal involving the Trump campaign in Russia. The real scandal was Hillary Clinton colluding with a whole different country. The White House on offense against what the president calls a, quote, disgraceful double standard. Team Trump pointing out that Democrats' own alleged coordination happened with foreign governments. Watch this. I do know for a fact that Democratic Party operatives went to the Ukrainian embassy to coordinate oppositional research and attacks against our campaign. So that's a story. The double standard is upsetting. I mean, you see it every day. I'd love to rant and rave about it, but candidly right now, with everything that's going on, I think that people see it. Is anybody saying, by the way, why didn't the DNC, why did the DNC have their operatives meeting? with the Ukrainians and actually getting information? Why, why is that not one standard and this is another? Kristen Fisher live in Washington tonight with the backstory on the DNC's alleged ties to the Ukraine. Live in Washington. So that, that was Fox News Channel on July 12th. And that, that on July 12th, that started like five straight days on the Fox News Channel of them hyping this story. That the real collusion was Hillary Clinton's collusion. But you know, that day, July 12th, a website called Cyber Berkut, B E R K U T, Cyber Berkut, started posting what they said were stolen Hillary Clinton emails that proved this story, that bolstered this story that the Clinton campaign and Ukraine secretly colluded and worked together during the election. Cyber Berkut posted that stuff, those supposed stolen emails from the Clinton campaign, on July 12th which is when Fox News started going nuts on this stuff. Cyber Berkut is believed by experts to be the Russian government. They are believed to be the latest online alter ego of Fancy Bear, the Russian military intelligence unit that hacked the DNC in the first place, that took all those Democratic Party stolen documents they obtained by hacking and then fed them back into the U.S. political system, into the U.S. media in a way that was designed to help Donald Trump and hurt Democrats. That's what they did during the election. They apparently are still at it. This summer, they are still feeding anti-democratic, anti-Hillary Clinton storylines cold from materials that they hacked from the Clinton campaign and the DNC. They're feeding them back into what isn't a campaign anymore, but is still a U.S. political system and a U.S. conservative media universe that will do all they can to help the Trump administration, apparently no matter the source of their information. Now, it's interesting. Fox News really started pushing this stuff on July 12th, the day that this front for Russian military intelligence started putting out its own data to support this story. But the White House actually started pushing it two days before that. And out of the blue, the White House resurrected these old claims that hadn't been circulating anywhere for months 
about Hillary Clinton being the real colluder and the real collusion being Clinton and Ukraine. The White House started that on the 10th of July. They were like the on-ramp. And within two days, this Russian military intelligence unit was feeding that stream of information with stolen emails. And then Fox News and other conservative media outlets picked it up and ran with it. And now your conservative uncle, who types with a caps lock key on and forwards you stuff from Breitbart and watches Fox News all day, he believes that there are two collusion scandals, if there are any. And the one where we've got the real proof is the one with Hillary Clinton. This presidency right now is in a rocky period for a lot of reasons, most of them self, all, all of them self-imposed. But nobody's quitting the administration, nobody's resigning, nobody in active Republican politics is calling on the president to resign or anything that dramatic. The continuing existential threat to this presidency remains the special counsel investigation into the Russia issue led by Robert Mueller. And today there are both intriguing and strange signs that there may be stuff going on inside that inquiry that we don't understand and that may not be a good sign for that inquiry. And we've got a fresh look at how the Russian attack that started this whole crisis and that started this whole investigation, it continues to operate on Donald Trump's behalf and with crucial amplification from the White House itself and from the conservative media universe that supports him. It's not over. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.